a growth of 11% year on year, but a dip of 0.5% quarter on quarter, mainly due to static performance in gold loans and microfinance portfolios. In gold loans, we were faced with certain challenges arising from the interest price competition amongst the NBFCs, which prevailed for much more much of the year, and which had begun to affect our margins. Therefore, we took a conscious decision to steadily withdraw from the price war. Notwithstanding its short-term impact on growth, however, going forward, we see this as a temporary or passing phase because of unhealthy competition benefits no one. Our gold loss portfolio stands at 20,168 crore, which has grown 6% year on year, but has come down by 1.5% sequentially due to the reasons such as price competition among CNBFCs, which I mentioned earlier. For these, reasons, for these same reasons, our consolidated quarterly net profit of 261 crore, which is similar to class reported for Q3. Our microfinance subsidiary, microfinance loan has fostered a sequential decline of 3% in AEM, which stands now at 6,653 crore. We continue to focus on food and lending in this unsecured business, given the residual impact of the pandemic third week. We expect to resume focus on growth once the economic recovery is on firm ground. Our commercial vehicle business benefited from the economic recovery and reported a brisk quarter on quarter growth of 8.8% to 1,643 crore, while our housing finance subsidiary grew its book by 3.5% during the quarter to 845 crores. Similarly, our MSME and the allied business grew sequentially by 29% during the quarter to 919 crores. For the full details of the performance of all our business, and for a comprehensive take on our overall financial performance. It is over to our CFO, this is Bidhu Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us a discussion on our financial assets for the quarter of financial year 22. With respect to gold loan demand, we continued with our offerings of competitive interest rate to high ticket size gold loan customers who are price sensitive. Currently, over rupees 2 lakh ticket size constitutes 33 percentage of our AEM. In the light of new MFR regulations, we are in the process of building secured loan book by adding gold loan, gold loan business. The gold loan AEM, as on 31st March 2022, in our world, stands at rupees 300 crore. From an accounting standpoint, we have prudentially recognized the likely impact of RBI guidance. Accordingly, one significant change during the quarter has been that we have stopped considering the collections after the balance sheet date as a reduction from NPS, even though we are technically permitted to consider up to one month collection after the balance sheet date. This has been the main reason for the increase in companies reported GNPA. On a like-for-like -like basis, if we consider the post-balance sheet date collections as per past practice, our GNPA as on March 31st would be 1.42% versus 1.36% during the previous quarter. Now coming to the operational overview, we are carrying surplus liquidity across all businesses and legal entities of the group. Cash and cash equivalents on hand on a consolidated basis was rupees 
2697 crore and our ground bank line was rupees 4052 crore our cp exposure is only 3.9 percentage of total borrowing in the standalone mdt our alm is well positioned across all buckets standalone borrowing cost has come down to 7.15 percentage in comparison with 7.47 percentage in q3 fi22 our consolidated aem for q4 fi22 was rupees 30260 crore marginally down by 0.5 percentage q on q and up by 11.2 percentage by oi during this quarter we were able to maintain our aem despite huge competition from the market our average ltv is 62 percentage which is well below the peer group during this quarter there was strong focus on managing our cost position cost to aem decreased from 7.07 in q3 fi22 to 6.48 percentage during q4 fi22 consolidated profit after tax loss rupees 1329 crore for fi22 down by 23 percentage by oi due to reduction in goal on irr in the second half of the year consolidated profit after tax for the quarter rupees 261 crore similar to last quarter roe on a consolidated basis was 12.6 percentage and roa was 3 percentage for the quarter our leverage is currently only 2.9 times talking about the goal on business which constitutes 67 percentage of the consolidated aem the remaining 33 percentage comprises of microfinance vehicle housing and sme finance Goal on AEM decreased by 1.4 percentage Q on Q and up by 5.7 percentage YOY. Gold holdings stood at 68 tons, down by 2.9 percentage Q on Q and up by 4 percentage YOY. During the quarter, we were able to add 3.75 lakh new customers. Our average ticket size and average duration was rupees 56,568 and 82 days. Advertisement has come down to rupees 12.2 crore. Standalone patch for FI22 was rupees 1,304 crore. Our standalone profit was rupees 265, up by 2.4 percentage QONQ. The total number of gold loan customers stood at 23.9 lakh. The gold loan book at rupees 20,168 crore. Our gold loan disbursements during the quarter stood at Rs. 30,930 crore compared to Rs. 24,929 crore in Q3 FI22. Coming to microfinance business, Asherwa AEM stands at Rs. 7,002 crore down by 1.2 percentage Q on Q and up by 17 percentage YOI. And this report, business reported a profit of Rs. 13 crore for FI22 down by 20 percent this quarter mfi reported a loss of rupees 7 crore compared to a profit of 60 lakh in q3 fi22 our collection efficiency from mfi business during the quarter stood at 99 percent and disbursements during the quarter was rupees 1124 crore coming to vehicle finance business we have reported an aem of rupees 1643 crore which is up by 8.8 percentage Q on Q and by 56.1 percentage YOY. Collection efficiency for the quarter was 104 percentage compared to 103 percentage in Q3 FI22. Home loan business, total book of rupees 845 crore, which is up by 3.5 percentage Q on Q and up by 26.9 percentage YOY. It operates from 73 branches and reported a profit of Rs. 7.2 crore during the year. Collection efficiency for the quarter was 109% compared to 100% in Q3 FI22. GNPA brought down to 5.9% from 12.3% during this quarter and we are compliant with the new RBI IRAC norms. Loan to NDLC is at rupees 31 crore and uh, loan to uh, the MSME and others at rupees 920 crore. Provisions and write off during the quarter 24 crore compared to 17 crore in Q3. 
the board declared an interim dividend of 75 paisa during the quarter. Uh, companies well capitalized with a capital adequacy ratio of 31 percentage. Consolidated net stands at rupees 8,368 crore. Book value stands at rupees 98.9. Thank you. We can go for Q&A now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch on telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Dhavargada from DSP. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I had uh, uh, three questions. Uh, first is uh, relating to uh, the pricing pressure in the gold business. Uh, if you could update uh, what is the current uh, situation and your outlook on uh, uh, you know uh, lending rates uh, in the gold loan uh, business. Uh, the second uh, question was uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the tenure mix in gold loan. If you could provide how much is uh, you know three month or below and how much is above uh, that. Uh, and uh, uh, the third one is uh, I see there is a uh, 63 crore uh, fair value uh, gain uh, uh, during the quarter. Is it on account of uh, you know assignment in the MFI book or any other portfolio? If you could just clarify that. Uh, yeah, those were the three questions. Thank you. So the pricing pressure. So we have decided that uh, what is we believe to be prudent for us, we will settle that. We thought uh, it would be somewhere around 21 percent. So currently our disbursement yield is around 21 percent. So we have, we have decided that we will stick to that. We had a discussion with some of the players, uh, and some of the players have already told our line, and uh, others said, uh, yes, so they will, uh, one other large company has said, uh, they will uh, slowly throw down to our life. So, uh, pricing uh, it is seen by the industry as reasonable, but it's around 22 percent. So, we, uh, we believe that uh, gradually the market will uh, yeah, realize the necessity of a reasonable pricing. So, this, um, yeah. A unreasonable price for so no that. The second thing is the question. Your second question is the tenure mix is around the two third is in three months and the thirty percent is six months and below five percent is in one year where the LTV is granted is sixty percent. On the third, uh, the, um, in MFI, uh, we did assignment transaction, and uh, uh, that is the reason for uh, the one-time income during this quarter. Right. Sir, if I may uh, ask a follow-up on the first question. So, uh, in month of April, have we seen uh, further uh, reduction in gold AUM uh, because of uh, maintaining the yield, or is the portfolio uh, growing? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, the, during the month, it was uh, rather stagnant. Uh, yeah, it was flat. But uh, may we have seen, we are seeing slight growth. And we hope uh, by June things will further improve. We are showing signs of in the, yeah, growth now. So, so um, maybe there was a, a marginal growth. And slowly, but it is picking up. And by, towards the June, what happens is with our school reopening, etc., it starts to catch up. Then, in uh, the, after that, uh, the, after the, uh, once the monsoon is over, uh, uh, sowing season starts. This is how the season for the gold on comes. So we hope that uh, this year we are targeting a minimum growth of around 10% at this pricing of uh, not less than 20%. Uh, uh, got it, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
thanks for my questions. I had some questions on uh, Ashirvan. So, firstly, sir, can you comment on what are what is the proportion of restructured loans in uh, in Ashirvan? Uh, secondly, uh, when uh, Bindu mentioned about the change in accounting policy for NPLs, uh, has that impacted Ashirvan too? Because our NPL are up uh, 70 bips QOQ. And lastly, how much of yield hike are we taking uh, because of the removal of the spread cap? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, we currently fund the cap. Yeah. The, 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 the removal of uh, this uh, the NIM cap, uh, we have okay, factored a few things in pricing. One, uh, we have factored around the 3% that's the credit cost. Because we have taken uh, over the past uh, five years, uh, including other, we can go that uh, that's a demon period and this pandemic. We have seen the credit cost to be on an average to be around the three percent. So that is factored in the new pricing. Yes. Now we need to do this. So, uh, so on the restructuring, see, we have currently 12, 12 and a half percent uh, book, which is still remaining uh, at around uh, 790 crores. Uh, and uh, uh, we we had followed this. I mean, uh, this uh, for Ashirwad, we never uh, considered that uh, that April collection go. So that way, we we have not provided anything extra in mean, NPL. Uh, no, sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't get you. Uh, my, my simple question was: Have we changed the accounting policy? Uh, like, uh, we have changed in the standalone business. Ki, uh, even if you collect one month after the balance sheet date, you reduce your NPL, something like that. Have we done that in Ashirwad? No, no. So we have followed the what uh, <coughs> new IRAC norms uh, where we cannot upgrade the account to standard even if we if, unless we collect the full collection so we have aligned with that policy so we aligned with that this particular quarter or was it last quarter itself current quarter current quarter we have aligned last quarter we have not taken that we have taken this in the current quarter okay so that explains the uh uh, increase in NPL. Yes. Okay, okay. And let's, on the first question, again, if I may understand to be factored in a 3% credit cost to determine the new yields, but net net, how much have our yields gone up by? Yeah, by 4%. I'm sorry? 4%. 4 percent is it, Earlier it was 24 Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, okay, great. That helps. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Tibrewal from Mothila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, one, um, firstly, maybe for the benefit of all, if you could uh, please explain what was uh, that change in NPA recognition norms uh, that you talked about uh, in your opening remarks, which has led to such a sharp uh, spike in your uh, gross and net NPS in the standalone business? So, as I have mentioned in the opening remarks, earlier we were uh, yes, taking one month collection post closure, and uh, now we have stopped that. So, that has uh, uh, spiked the NPA, which is only temporary. These are, uh, these are not real NPS, you know. These are all technical NPAs where gold is there as security. So these are realized uh, during the next quarter. Uh, so this is uh, yeah, uh, so this will not lead to any credit cost. So it's only a timing issue. Yes, uh, so it is referred to this quarter, and that will not be repeated. Okay. So my second question was on the MFI business. Uh, I mean. I mean, how do we explain the fact that we talk about collection efficiencies of 99% and if you look at, I mean, some of the other MFIs who are either listed or unlisted, they have all exhibited very strong uh, momentum, talk about disbursements or improvement in asset quality. 
but what what we have reported is is quite contrary to what others are saying at least in the mfi business and secondly i mean so how do we explain the flip flop that we are currently seeing in the mfi business second quarter of this uh, fiscal year there was a, such a, a, a sharp growth in your aum and then for the next two quarters q3 and q4 i mean we say we are concentrating on asset quality and collections and we are seeing the uh, the mfi aum degrowth no no this is it is not a flip flop yeah it is not a signal so so the power the power during the past four months we are seeing a collection at the rate of 100% uh, including ads so, so we have seen a, a steady decline in delinquency but the uh, uh, the whole the restructured portfolio well, from that there is a um, now everything has come out you know that uh, yeah there is a plot to npa that is the reason now the yes during that quarter that the dispersal so uh, the kai so then um, yeah we thought uh, we uh, yeah will take a, a steady growth so the, not only that so there, there was some reason also to slow down dispersal to the uh, this quarter last quarter the reason is uh, yeah there were talk about uh, one more wave as it as it other was uh, it was clouded with some uncertainty so, so uh, we thought let us see how the things are spinning out the pandemic is uh, uh, spinning out uh, so now yes uh, with the new notes uh, yes we started this process we are uh, expecting a dispersal of uh, around 6000 crores this year so it will be at a pricing of 24% the excuse comfort and uh, you know the new dispersal uh, so the, the new dispersal uh, the collections are good the uh, the the, the collections are more or less of the pre covid level but we expect uh, a credit cost of 1% extra so, so that's why we have budgeted for next year's budget this is uh, so with the churn of the portfolio, as it were, at this rate of some 500 crores advance fast, yeah, with some uh, filters uh, in the, uh, um, uh, yeah, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the dispersal, as it were. We hope uh, uh, things will uh, improve a lot, and uh, we are targeting a reasonable, uh, uh, reasonable profit during this year, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and next year uh, will be a full year as well as uh, the business performance of, uh, uh, is concerned compared to pre-COVID last. So with your permission, I wanted to squeeze in one last question on your uh, core gold loan business. Uh, sir, I mean, while you explain that, I mean, the recovery has been uneven in some of the unorganized sectors and because of which uh, the, the demand clearly, sir, I mean, looking at, I mean, the kind of, I mean, sequential degrowth that we saw in your uh, gold region. I mean, clearly suggests that, I mean, the demand has been weak. So, I mean, what, I mean, in, what in your view really explains uh, this kind of a demand today? I mean, is it because, I mean, your your core, which used to be rural customers and, and, and on and off, we keep hearing about, uh, uh, demand being really slow uh, in, in, in rural India. Does that explain uh, the kind of uh, demand, big demand that you are seeing right now? And, and I also remember seeing in your presentation, you talked about, I mean, I mean liquidity tightening and, and cost increasing, leading to some of your, I mean, other weaker peers, I mean, not, not being able to disburse, which could lead to a rise in yields. But sir, I mean, are we, I mean, A, I mean, you talked about some unhealthy competition between NBFCs, but, but very clearly, sir, if, if I understand from, from at least mid-May onwards, I mean, we have seen a lot of uh, rationalization in the unhealthy competition which was prevalent may perhaps in, in January and February. So how has that, I mean, uh, I would say, uh, competitive landscape, uh, which was very, very aggressive between NBFCs until March, uh, progressed, uh, let's say, April and May. And so lastly, I mean, are we actually kind of uh, competing among NBFCs or is, or is our real competition today with banks 
and and predominantly higher ticket size customers and which is why i mean the impact that we are seeing on the yields today sir see the the first part even though the economy started doing a very improving so this is mainly because of the from the demand from the upper middle class so the formal sector and the upper middle class so the bottom of the pyramid that demand is still it is uh, there is a drag there so the the one the, the we, we, we can we can definitely see this in rural areas the 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 spend for social functions like festivals marriages etc have come down drastically so their income is improving slowly it's uh, yeah it is expected to improve with the uh, investments uh, in infrastructure etc etc as planned by the government etc it is slowly improving so once the demand uh, is caught up there i think uh, the rates are in the pricing is to go up there is a good part is there is a growing realization among the npfc uh, that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, there should be a better rationalization as far as pricing is concerned so the, um, the, the second part is um, the uh, competition is the competition was the npfc or the between nbfc and the bank see the bank customer and the nbfc customer as far as whole loan is concerned the, the the requirements are different one and profile also to some extent different even though some overlap is there so the requirement the, the is different in the sense that those who wanted uh, a short term loan say one or two months three months etc will not waste two days going to a bank for a daily wage earner for example he loses around 1500 to 2000 rupees yeah, yeah, if he goes to a bank by actually wasting his two days that's why even the customers uh, For, for, um, for a larger ticket for a short larger ticket also for a short term cup tour so they, uh, yeah, we have seen over these years uh, particularly in uh, yeah the where the, 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 the awareness about all these are very high if amongst the population like kerala uh, the npfcs are also growing it is because of this reason this is a difference uh, a, It's more than a profile uh, yeah, the requirements for which uh, they uh, approach a lending institution whether a bank or a non bank uh, yeah they, this is different if somebody wants for a long term yeah say one year etc two years etc uh, he has a reason to go to a bank and wait two days uh, so the, the essentially the competition is amongst the uh, npfc so in vfc is uh, started uh, yeah cutting the rates uh, yeah and uh, the vfc b and vfc is also felt like there is uh, a rational competition so uh, to some extent we have stopped that so uh, now another thing for this competition this is i have highlighted uh, in my uh, earlier discussion uh, there was uh, uh, availability of money for vfc the banks are flush with funds etc and also the uh, the policy makers intention was also to keep the rates uh, low and make the money available to everybody so uh, now the uh, the uh, because of the inflation the trend is changed now uh, the, the indicative rates have gone up by 40 bits and again uh, we all believe that it is uh, likely to go up further uh, sooner so the mindset is changed so slowly the rates are increasing now i hope in another one quarter so the, the demand from the bottom of the pyramid would pick up thereby the rates will go up. so this i believe that uh, the rates cut like this is uh, uh, only temporary so may not last for long 
thank you so much for patiently answering my questions sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shubhranshu mishra from ubs please go ahead hi sir thank you for taking my question a uh, couple of questions sir uh one is uh, uh with the competitive system is ramya requested to speak a bit louder sir hi can you hear me now yes please go ahead right the uh, thanks for taking my question so the first question would be on the yield so uh, we've seen a yield compression alongside uh, we've also seen the uh, online gold loan proportion going back to what we were around 3 years ago so uh, are these the normalized levels looking uh, going for uh, uh, at around uh, 19 20% then if you're looking at the ROAs of around uh, five and a half six percent. Are these the normalized levels of ROAs and yields go, uh, going forward? That's the first question. Se- uh, second is on Ashurvad. Uh, uh, are we looking out for a strategic investor in the uh, in the microfinance business uh, or uh, is that, uh, for some incremental capital deployment? That's the second. And the uh, third is a data keeping question. What's the acc- accrued interest uh, uh, for this quarter? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are currently settling down at 21% of the yield in Gola. So, um, uh, we feel like others will also, other APOCs will also slowly come back. We are targeting a yield not lo- less than 5%, ROA, ROA. So, uh, this, this is our target. So our consolidated ROE uh, is down primarily. One reason, major reason is not only the reduction in the ROE, but also the microfinance sector, which is um, substantial for us. Uh, it has not reported, it has it's not, uh, not started reporting profit as a reason. So the microfinance growth is uh, for the capital requirement. Yes, uh, we are Uh, targeting a growth of around 20% in the MFI business. So for that, uh, yeah, uh, we prefer to have raised capital, but uh, the, the situation is fast improving. Uh, now many bankers also approach us, uh, yeah, uh, uh, citing about the opportunities in the sector, etc., etc. Uh, we are seriously considering about uh, the option of raising capital. So uh, in between, if any capital requirement is there, the parent uh, has the strength to uh, 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 invest that. Uh, we have a very high capital adequacy ratio in the parent company. So in an emergency situation, um, if the situation warrants, we will do that. But uh, the capital adequacy, of the MFI, Ashurvad itself is around 20%, 20% or 20%. So um, there is enough room to raise tier to capital also. And now uh, investors uh, are available for uh, investing there. So uh, to meet the target of 50% growth in FI23, uh, we actually, we, we, uh, for want of capital, uh, Uh, we, we need not stall that target of growth, which is available under the end. In any emergency, we need to pass the capacity. Interest accrued uh, 420 crores, that is around 2% of uh, a goal on India. That's 2% you said, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, just one last question. Uh, I didn't fo- uh, follow the yield that you uh, uh, that you uh, spoke about. Uh, you said 22% would be the normalized yield going forward, man. That's what uh, uh, one question. So dispersal, our dispersal yield is over 21% now. Dispersal yield. And uh, yeah, we hope to maintain over 20%. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So much for your time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shweta Dabdadar from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. A couple of questions. Uh, the first one is on Ashirwad's microfinance. So, ma'am, you mentioned that uh, post the removal of interest rates uh, from the regulator, what are the current yields and what were it prior to that? And therefore, what is the leg up on the ROA, if any? See, we are targeting... 
and ROE of around 20%, not less than 20% of the microfinance business. So every year, uh, 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 the, 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 um, there are certain frequencies we um, see some such uh, challenges here, like natural calamities, etc., so which is actually disrupting this. Uh, all the, taking all these into account, uh, yeah, we um, is, uh, we are we are pricing the product at around 21 percent to 24 percent. Yeah, um, for which the rationale is already published. So in the past, uh, our cost of borrowing was 10.3 percentage, and with margin cap, our uh, lending rate was 20.35 percentage. Under the new regulations, uh, our idea is to charge with 24 percentage, considering this increased credit cost in that. Okay, and you believe this increase in ease, uh, you know, that the entire benefit will flow in in the in in this year, or uh, how how is it like? We are dispersing around uh, yeah nearly five hundred crores plus every month. So yeah, the, the, so there is a portfolio churn now. So total dispersal is expected to be around six thousand crores. The portfolio expected in microfinance uh, this year is around 8,000 crores. So out of that, um, yeah, around uh, 6,000 crores uh, would be the, uh, the yeah, with a new yield. You know. All the disbursements made during this year will carry that pricing. Okay. Okay, understood. The so second question is on gold finance and yields. So I remember you mentioning last quarter and even earlier that uh, this this sort of uh, uh, lower rate phenomenon is going to be very temporary. But today, if I hear out your commentary, you're mentioning that you will be maintaining around 20-21% for quite some time now. Um, so, uh, so uh, do you see? I mean, uh, you have answered this question even in the earlier part of the conference call. But still, so do you see the uh, competitive intensities continue to flaring up, and therefore you will continue to take a uh, hit on your yields, and therefore the pressure on net interest margins in the standalone, especially on the gold loan side, will will uh, remain for a while. So what I told is I'm settling at around 21 percent for now. So and I'm watching the market how the other things are panning out. So few reasons also I highlighted here. One reason is the small ticket which is coming from the bottom of the pyramid. It, their demand has come down because of the situation in the economy. So uh, the, they the, uh, they are expected to the demand there is expected to revive in another one quarter. So that will be an opportunity to uh, to get an increased yield. Till then, then the competition uh, is because the yes, uh, the customers have come down because of this situation, pandemic situation. The demand has come down. The second thing, the policy makers have decided that there should be abundant liquidity in the system and the pricing which is very low. The one thing, the increase, the cost of the funds are going up 40%, rise is there for the indicative rates. And um, uh, with the rising inflation, it is likely to go up, etc. And uh, the, slowly, the uh, tightening also will take uh, will have to happen. Uh, so these, these are uh, uh, something which is um, uh, expected in the very near future. So these things could reverse the trend. So accordingly, the pricing also will would be desired. Understood. So one last question from my side. If I look at your OGL loans, so there the ticket size has gone up. Uh, so anything to read on that? Uh, because quarter on quarter, the increase is slightly meaningful. So the OGL was high during the lockdown period because the many of the other conventional loans also have been shifted to OGL because the offices were closed. 
now when the, all the offices are closed and transportation restored to the pre covid level people would love to come to the office so that's why the ogl uh, is not showing growth in the recent days uh, no what i meant was the the average ticket size have actually gone up on the uh, ogl uh, business so uh, what what do we read into that so the see every ticket size uh, of a company also has gone down business also has gone up corresponding is there is an increase in ogl ticket size also okay okay thank you sir these are the questions from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of dawal gara from dsp please go ahead Uh, yeah, uh, sir. A couple of uh, follow-ups. So, so one is on uh, gold branches. So, on uh, uh, the uh, presentation, uh, you have restated the uh, third quarter gold branches. So, just wanted to reconfirm: is this the uh, Ashirwal branches which now get class- classified under uh, gold branches? And uh, then the other question was on uh, uh, advertising and promotion expense. If you could provide that for uh, fourth quarter and the full year. Uh, yeah. Thanks. So in uh, the parent company, there is no increase in the branch network. In Gold Loan, uh, we have opened branches uh, in Ashwa because uh, yeah, there uh, there is an opportunity to take the unsecured uh, loan up to 25 percent now because of the change in regulation. So for that, uh, the old uh, MFI branches may not be suited here. Old everything will be there. So we started uh, in three hundred places uh, with three hundred new branches. Is that better? Yeah. That's better. Yeah. So as we discussed in the last quarter, Q3, uh, we were aggressive in advertisement spend because we are not spending much in the past, and uh, that we we could uh, get the benefit uh, during the two quarters and year quarters. Uh, so um, this quarter we rationalize expenditure because uh, as the brand is established, then it will be more of a recall of the brand. And uh, this quarter we have done the rationalization uh, as guided in the Q2 quarter. Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, how much was the amount uh, for four uh, Q? Twelve crore. Twelve crore. Okay. And for full year would be how much approximately? Eighty-nine crore. 89 crore okay and uh, just to reconfirm uh, sir you mentioned 300 branches in uh, uh, ashirwad on the gold loan side correct yes okay sir. and uh, sir uh, in the earlier part of the call you had given a guidance for uh, gold loan growth aum growth uh, if you could just reconfirm that i i thought i missed probably the number yeah 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 so april the, the growth was flat may we see some growth and uh, june onwards so we expect uh, the growth to pick up because uh, by that time we expect uh, the uh, lower middle class then what of the pyramid cuz they will become active the rural areas so um, uh, we are seeing indication on the basis of that what i expect is in manipur finance we expect uh, gold loan growth uh, to be around 10% to the the um, year 2023 and and overall uh, 10% in gold loan and overall uh, f- uh, consolidated uh, aum uh, expectation for 23 is so we expect that uh, to grow by 15% understood understood thank you so the some of the businesses uh, are growing well in uh, non mfi non gold business the dispersals are around 300 crores 250 to 300 crores now we hope uh, that will pick up further uh, got it sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of alok shah from mncl group please go ahead uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity so good evening sir uh, a quick question on the stand alone business here sir uh, you know historically if you look at the roes that we have been doing on stand alone business uh it's been in excess of 20% also 
uh, what is you know uh, the management stance on taking this number which is now probably at 13 14% back to 20% level uh, and how far uh, you know or how quickly should we be at those numbers on the standalone roe side see is uh, this is the, the effect of the pandemic the economy has gone to a standstill situation now it is recovering so the the, the uh, expecting a recovery and uh, the the covid situation and lockdown uh, is expected to so the lockdown situation is not expected to uh, recover because of that we are expecting 10% growth there and other businesses are expected to grow over 20% and the asset quality also would be good and the uh, mfi we are expecting uh, roe of over 20% so, so the other businesses also uh, which have as uh, already established as strong footing uh, is likely to grow and report good profit so, uh, yeah so if the uh, mfi has come back uh, the control uh, roe will definitely go to 20% Uh, so I was looking more on the standalone ROE, but okay, let me put it another way. Uh, as we see, I, I tell you, your standalone things are improving. When so the yield, uh, yeah, the the dispersed the, the yield, what we realized to the last quarter was around the eighteen point six six second days. So, so uh, it is uh, expected to increase by around one hundred fifty bits. to to other bits going forward right uh sure sir and a question here as an extension to the gold loan book uh you know we understand that 33% of our portfolio is to loans about 2 lakh rupees uh and incrementally we are going to lend at 21% so is that what we will do for say a 2 lakh rupee and about tickets as loan or that book will be at a lower yield yeah that could be a dead lower yield uh, what the yeah the blended yield is what i have said uh, to be around 21% sure okay and this 33% of book which is to like an above this number was at what percentage probably a quarter or a year back uh, just to understand you know the yield impact because of shift to higher uh, yeah to that the was around the 35% no ஒன்னி ஒன்னும் and on the duration side uh, i missed that point you said that 30% of loans are to customers uh, with duration about 6 months so was that yeah, right or 4 months and 5% uh, uh, yeah, for one year and 65% three months so you know over a period of time we've seen this mix shifting uh, from beyond 3 months to 6 months and one year is there some kind of a strategy that we plan so uh, this uh, is not because of the strategy yeah those who want that uh, lower ltv they can opt for that six months the ltv is lower what is still lower yeah uh, sure okay this helps uh, my questions on the goal side so in the msi book i was just trying to understand that you you spoke that you up to your yields by 400 basis points to something like 24% now when i look at the largest msi lender uh so his yields are relatively much lower to us uh you know so at 24% do we stand uh, to kind of compete with uh, the largest players in the mfi space 
see two things are here. One, uh, for the MFI customers, more than the interest the service is most important. The proximity to the customer is most important. So, so if we have the people there, service there, bondage there, for, for a small ticket of that size, the customers won't go elsewhere. So the customer's loyalty will be there. So the, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the, because of that, I don't think, I don't expect uh, the um, we will lose customers. Sorry, we'll okay. lose. So is there a strategy in, you know, if you can share on how to kind of go out and add more customers on the MFI side? Uh, because if I look at point to point numbers, uh, they probably are flat or a marginal growth, QOQ and or YY. Uh -huh. So how do we kind of look to? Yeah, this uh, was a question earlier. Uh, do, 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 do the previous quarter there was a uh, quantum leap for the reverse of the meter come down? So the reason is, uh, yeah, we, we anticipated uh, one more wave, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and things going bad, etc. Luckily for all of us, uh, it has not happened. So the previous quarter we didn't have that idea, so the dispersal. So now the dispersals come have come down to around uh, yeah, five hundred crores per month, around two thousand crores annually. That is what budgeted. With that, we expect a growth of twenty to twenty percent only. So we we are sure to get it because uh, we are mostly targeting our own good customers and uh, the. When uh, we uh, yeah, on board the uh, new customers, uh, we, uh, whatever we have seen in the past, we have uh, uh, constructed a filter whereby the quality customers uh, uh, are at the end of the uh, are on board. So. Uh, right, sir. Uh, if I could squeeze in a last question, uh, that's on the accounting uh, of NPA. Uh, if you know what is that NPA number on the MFI portfolio, we've seen that move up from 2.8 to 3.5. Adjusted for that change in NPA accounting policy, that number would have been at. Yes. You're right, right now. Yeah, yeah. So for new IRAC norm, what we implemented, which uh, RBI announced in November, uh, that uh, contribute around 20 crore of additional NPA for us. Uh, so that uh, <coughs> so. So currently it stands at 3.5 and including including that it could be 3.2. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sripal Doshi from Equitas. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, good evening and thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, so the question was, uh, what is the revised lending rate in the MFI segment post the spread cap removal? Like what's the range now? This is 24%. 24%? 24%, right. Okay. Earlier that would be? It was around 20.5%. Okay. So the second question was, uh, what is the disbursement in the MFI segment for the fourth, for the fourth quarter? The MFI, we are, we are, we are new revised guidelines have come. Our software has to, we have to be updated, etc. Now we have all the startup lending uh, under the new regulatory regime. So we are dispersing around 500 crores per month, and uh, our collections are around 300 crores per month. In principle. So, principle. so the monthly net growth is expected. Right. Yeah, around 150 crores. Okay, so the 4Q disbursement would be close to 1500 crore, is it? 1126. Yeah, yeah. It is expected to be uh, yeah. uh, expected to be uh, around 18 and 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 and uh, as you know, what is expected is around 1800 for 2000 crores. Okay. Sir, uh, I mean, just something that, uh, like we've seen 
So the uh, lenders in the MFI space operating in Assam or West Bengal, they have also seen you know par numbers coming out, coming down, and the 4Q overall was a good quarter for 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 lenders across uh, India in the MFI space. While well, we have seen par number increasing, and uh, you know our even our loan book has also behaved in a little uh, different manner in terms of growth. So what explains this, uh, you know, this this difference here? And uh, the other part was you have highlighted that you know we see the MFI business at 24, 25% ROE. So uh, while if I look at the last five years, you know, we we the, the ROA and ROE has not been so uh, well as compared to peers in this landscape. So what gives you this comfort going ahead? So the power is coming down. The power has come down, uh, you know, drastically it has come down, it has not gone up. So the, the, during normal times, the company was getting an ROA of around 5%. And the ROE of around over 22%. So, so during the periods like demand or uh, this pandemic only, uh, the, it has uh, dropped. This is, this is the scenario of the industry. So, so yeah, the, the the collections are doing good. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, during the last four months, we are getting a collection of 100 percent which includes OD collections also so um, the challenge here is for uh, the restructured portfolio uh, yes uh, which is uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is the industry as a whole so then what percent of the restructured portfolio would be out of moratorium now yeah, we we have not offered any moratorium uh, to restructure except for the month of July. Yeah. So there is no moratorium, uh, no no customer in under moratorium as of now. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for that explanation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, firstly, what is the current minimum rate for gold loans in our branches? Say for a low ticket loan of 50,000 to 1 lakh and taking a 65% LTV, what will be the minimum rate he will be offered in our branch? So the rates starts from just 10% to 20% of This is the rate. Small ticket for short okay, so 24 months and last ticket it starts with 10%. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, and uh, the blended yield the, uh, is expected to be uh, uh, the, uh, we take uh, into account of the dispersal yield on a daily basis, taking uh, into consideration of the history uh, so the trend of the closure, uh, etc. etc which is tracked by the system on a daily basis. On that basis, the disbursement yield now is around 21%. That's the planetary yield. And, got it. Uh, and uh, what is now the customer's response uh, to the now higher rates for gold loans, uh, say, in typically urban or semi-urban branches because we stopped that 6.9% scheme in March and uh, now I believe the minimum rate you spoke about is about 10-12%. So are we seeing that inquiries or footfalls have gone down in branches or are we seeing that loan conversions out of the incoming uh, inquiries or footfalls, uh, that ratio coming down? Yeah, there is a, yeah. So it has come down to some extent. That's why, uh, well, uh, yeah, if the same rate is continued, perhaps it would have grown by around the uh, 25 percent during this quarter. That was the trend then. And sir, yeah. So that uh, okay. so there is an impact. Okay. Yeah, there is an impact because of that. So. 
that's what i told you yes so what you want to protect what i believe that what should be protected is a reasonable profit to the company and i am targeting an ROE of around 20% in this business so uh, rather than intending in the price war i thought i should settle at around 21% that's why uh, this has been and there is some uh, realization among some of the players that they also have reached and we expect most okay. of them to come up to this level sooner than later hopefully so the situations are also changing mm-hmm. the rates are going up there is an indication that it will go up and there will be a tightening also so the one reason was the easy money you know so the, the, the reverse will have to happen so the, this is the reason why you know for a higher price so whenever the when the result increase there will be so we are uh, likely to lose business and we have lost business the new business that's why we are instead of 25% growth uh, is will the quarter uh, is what i expect which could have been expecting could have expected um if uh, we continue with the same pricing that's not happen now okay uh and sir in the light of the current dynamics uh, are we trying to or are we thinking of adding more customer acquisition efforts or channels since we would want to grow at 10 12 percent even with 21 percent yield and given that competition is looking uh quite uh strong or solid uh are we then looking at uh uh you know utilizing more channels or creating more channels of uh acquiring customers or attracting customers so that we eventually have higher inquiries and higher footfalls and then we can convert uh, you know as per our growth target so uh, what i am expecting is a reasonable profit reasonable in the sense that i wish the central on a profit will be at an ROE of around 20% so i am giving more importance to that because Uh, as i mentioned earlier i feel like the price war is temporary and uh, so yeah, the it will be uh, uh, back so the, so the 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 price war will be over sooner than later that's why i thought of taking the lead and the, then the customers will come back so now they are also falling in line the customers are expected to come back Mm-hmm. Sir, uh, any any uh, thoughts on brand expansion plans? I mean, are we looking at it in a different light now for, for required for growth, or uh, we will be again uh, very uh, adding very limited branches? So we have applied to the bank to open around the end of more branches. It's that application uh, has not been considered because for whole loan company. Uh, we need to seek prior permission to pull out companies means yeah. that the portfolio is over 50% so uh, we are applied and the competition uh, who are pull out companies they are applied so for the, so the some time uh, maybe because of the pandemic and all these issues the approvals have not come and i expect the approvals to come Uh, towards the uh, second quarter etc and whatever uh, permissions are granted accordingly we will open branches but now we are i am not in a position to tell you how many branches all depends on to the rda section okay okay and just lastly one clarification on collection efficiency number of 99% in microfinance for fourth quarter that includes the restructuring portfolio right because that is being built Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, yeah. think has come out. The cash is out of the yeah. lot, you know. All customers so, are built. We are not given much more for them. Okay, and this will be including the areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Pradeep Agrawal for closing comments. Uh, thank you, Suja. On behalf of Philip Capital, I would now like to thank the entire senior management team of Vinapuram Finance and all the participants for joining us on the call today. Thank you and have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. On behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.